Today we're going to take a look at the myth of the blower cam. Will that radical NA cam work under boost? Or do you have to swap out to a dedicated blower cam? In this video, we compare two different camshafts. We've got a fairly radical NA cam and a healthy blower cam. So the question is this, on our small block 400, will the NA cam still work under boost? Or do we have to run a dedicated blower cam to get the thing to be effective? For years and years, we've been taught the following thing. If you run a radical NA cam, it will allow all of the boost to escape out the open intake valve, through the open exhaust valve, and bleed out. That way you'll lose boost pressure and lose power. The question is, does this really happen? I mean, we were also told this was happening on a turbo application. The reality is it's probably less prevalent on a turbo combination. So why is that? Well, that's because of the presence of back pressure. So on a turbo application, you have back pressure between the exhaust valve and the turbo. And usually that back pressure is higher than the boost pressure. So the boost pressure is not gonna bleed out <laughs> into an area where there's higher pressure. It doesn't flow from low pressure to high pressure, it flows the other direction. So on a turbo application, it would be much more likely that the back pressure would flow the other way back through the exhaust valve into the combustion chamber. But on a supercharged application, we might see this because it has, it has high pressure in the induction system and no pressure in the exhaust. Therefore, it would allow this to happen. It would allow that boost to bleed out during this overlap period. So during the overlap period, if we make it more exaggerated with a radical camshaft, that should be more prevalent. So here's the question. Does an NA cam with lots of overlap still work with a supercharger? Well, the one way to find out, let's get to the dyno. To run our comparison between the NA race cam and the blower cam, we obviously needed a test motor. So we built a 400 inch small block Chevy using a Speedmaster block. Now the block was basically obviously a four bolt heavy duty block. It was a 4125 bore and we installed more Speedmaster components in this thing. We ran a stroker crank, a 3.75 inch crank. So it was kind of your standard small block Chevy 400, 4125 bore, 375 stroke. We ran the Speedmaster forged piston or a forged rods, I should say, and probe forged pistons. The, uh, the flat top piston with valve release produced an 11 to 1 compression with our 64 cc chamber heads. We had a TFS Super 23 CNC ported heads on this thing, and then we ran a couple of big camshafts from Bullet. The combination also had some Comp Gold 1.5 rockers, a Dart single plane intake, a Holly 950 HP carburetor, MSD distributor, you know, it kind of had all the good stuff. It was a good combination. Now, the first of our cams, we ran both a dedicated blower cam and an NA cam. And what we wanted to show was that even a radical NA cam with a tight LSA, lots of lift, lots of duration, lots of overlap, actually starts, still works well under boost. As a matter of fact, the old adage that what they do NA, they also do under boost. Kind of holds true here, and let's take a look. So this is our first combination, and this is with the blower cam. So run with the blower cam. The blower cam was a 671, 660 lift, 250, 260 degree duration, and 116 degree lobe separation angle. As you can see, it's still a pretty healthy camshaft for a small block Chevy. So run in this manner NA, because we're also going to run it with a blower. Our 400 inch small block produced 566 horsepower and 489 foot pounds of torque. So here's what happened NA after we installed our NA, you know, our kind of racy NA cam. So it made quite a bit more power. So the NA cam was quite a bit bigger also. It was a 671, 660 lift split, same as the blower cam, but it had more duration. It was a 264, 270 degree duration split and a tighter LSA at 110 degrees. So equipped with this cam, our combination produced 597 horsepower and 515 horsepower. So not surprisingly, you know, the bigger cam, bigger NA cam made more power NA after all. The blower cam was designed to run with boost, right? Now let's find out how these two cams compare 
once we had boost. After our comparing our camshafts on the naturally aspirated 400 inch small block, it was time to run that same comparison under boost. But I wanted to show you how much power the supercharger added with one of the cams. So this is our combination with the blower cam, 400 inch combination that made 565 horsepower. Here's what happens after we added the Vortex supercharger with this cam. Power output jumped to 714 horsepower, 597 foot-pounds of torque, and this was at a boost pressure of around 6 pounds. Now, when we added the supercharger, we installed a pulley combination that didn't wasn't going to produce a lot of boost because we didn't have to run a lot of boost to run this comparison. We had a 3.5-inch blower pulley and a 6-inch crank pulley, not spinning the supercharger very fast at all. But, as you can see, made good power. Now, we also swapped over from the 950 HP Holly over to a dedicated blower carb. It was an 850 from the guys at CSU. Connecting the supercharger was our custom discharge tube run through an extreme velocity uh, carb bonnet. It kind of had the little divider in the center, so all that worked out fairly well. We had a good air fuel curve and stuff. That was a good combination. But here's what happened when we ran that same Vortex supercharger, same pulley combination with our NA cam. As you can see, like it did when it was NA, the NA cam made more power under boost. So run with the NA cam, we produced 746 horsepower and 617 foot-pounds of torque. I'll go ahead and bring the NA cam up when we ran it NA so you can see the comparison between both of them. So as you can see, you know, more power NA, more power under boost. And that's kind of typical. When we run a camshaft comparison of, of any type, and obviously this was a fairly big, healthy NA cam, it had a lot of duration, it had a tight lobe separation angle, it had a lot of overlap, everything that you would think that would be going against it when you add boost, and obviously that's why you do a dedicated blower cam, because you want to get rid of all that dreaded overlap. Well, the reality is that what the cam does NA, it also does under boost, and here's a perfect example of that. So now let's take a look. I want to show you what happened to the boost curves, because even though on this combination the NA cam made more power than the blower cam, it also did so with less boost pressure. So let's take a look at those boost curves. When running this kind of comparison, one of the things I like to look at, especially if we're running any kind of boost, now with the turbo we would just set the wastegate, and so the boost would be the same when we run this kind of combination. But on a centrifugal supercharger or a root style supercharger, whenever you make a big change in cam timing or basically the power output of the NA motor, it also affects the boost pressure supplied by the supercharger because it's not self-adjusting. So here is the boost curve supplied by the Vortec T-Trim on our 400-inch small block. And remember, this is with the you know, wild cam timing, high compression, big cylinder head, single plane intake, all the things that you would do on an NA motor. But it's obviously working fairly well under boost too. But we had the pulleys on there. We had a three and a half inch blower pulley and a six inch crank pulley producing a peak of on our blower cam, 6.4 PSI. So, you know, not a lot of boost. And we were blowing through a carburetor. There was no intercooler on this. But it's a good combination. Made a lot of power. It made over 700 horsepower. So it'd be a pretty fun little street motor. But what happens to the boost when we install the bigger NA cam? So does the overlap let all that boost bleed out? Let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know what you think. But here's what happened. I'll show you. <clears throat> the boost pressure actually dropped. So it dropped from 6.4 pounds down to 5.8 pounds. So <clears throat> about a half a pound boost drop just from changing the camshaft. Now, obviously, we didn't change anything on the supercharger. So the question is, why did the boost drop? There are basically two answers I want you guys to, <laughs> want you guys to pick which one you think it is. Is it all the boost leaking out because we've got so much overlap? It's all the boost bleeding out. Or is it because now the motor is making more power using more of that airflow, so the pressure goes down, which pressure just basically is a measurement of the air backing up and the resistance to that flow. So let me know which one of those you think it is. But here's what I like to see when we make this kind of change. First of all, I like seeing more power always. That's always good. I like seeing more NA power. And when we add boost, I like seeing the pressure drop because more power 
at a lower boost level is always good. When you have lower boost, you have lower charge temperature. Not that that would be a big problem at only 5.8 pounds, especially on a blow-through carburetor, which basically is acting as the intercooler because when you blow through a carburetor, we've seen it lower the charge temperature by, you know, maybe as much as 100 degrees. So it's definitely working well as an intercooler. This combination worked well. Let's get to our conclusion. I really like this test, and for a number of reasons. First of all, I like the fact that it was a 400 small block. I mean, normally we build 350s or 383s or some other displacement, but I like the fact this was a 400. 4125 bore and a 375 stroke using that Speedmaster block. It was kind of a cool combination. I'll get a chance to test 400s a lot, and this was a cool piece. The other thing I like is not only was it a 400, but it was a healthy 400. It basically had everything it needed. It had plenty of compression, lots of camshaft, plenty of cylinder head, a good intake manifold, carburetor, you name it. It basically had everything, and it showed. It made a lot of power NA, and it had a lot more power if we were to turn up the boost. I mean, we only ran five or six pounds, and we made a ton of power. This thing would be crazy powerful with even more boost. We could turn the supercharger up, add turbos, whatever. There's a lot of potential there. The other thing I like is the test. I love running a back-to-back -back test on two camshafts. And whenever I run camshafts on with a turbo or a blower, I always compare them NA. And a lot of guys don't do that. They'll attribute the gains that they got from the cam change after it's under boost to something else, some sort of magical properties that the camshaft is supposed to have. If you compare it both NA and under boost, you can see what the correlation is. Hey, look, it made more power NA. Therefore, what do we expect to happen under boost? The thing that I like about that is whatever the power output is NA, boost just multiplies that. Stop thinking about these things in terms of a blower cam, a turbo cam, an NA cam. And this is especially important for guys putting together a combination now that's going to run NA, and they think about adding boost at a later date. Don't worry about it. Choose the cam for the following reasons. The camshaft determines the effective operating range, the idle quality, the fuel mileage and drivability, those kinds of things. Those things are important. So if you want a 6,000 RPM cam, pick a 6,000 RPM cam that's going to work well in that operating range with your combination. Then, later on, as our budget can afford, add boost. It's going to work well. You don't need any magic cam timing to make the boost work. It's just going to work. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep testing.